Welcome back to EKG Land. In this episode, we are going to discuss T waves. Since acute ischemia is an important, and sometimes life threatening cause of T wave changes and requires immediate medical care, electrocardiographic changes of T wave are usually challenging and worrisome for physicians. So, to prevent unnecessary medical evaluations, it's essential to know the normal variations of T wave in details. Let's start with normal T wave features. T wave is the most variable part of EKG. In general, we expect T waves to be upright in all leads except AVR and we one The amplitude is usually less than 5 mm in limb leads, and less than 10 mm in precordial leads. They are slightly asymmetric, with the upstroke slower than downstroke. On the other hand, there are several well-known normal variations, that may be mistaken for life-threatening situations like acute ischemia. Let's go through the first important normal variation that is tall T waves. Remember that, there is no universal definition for tall T. In general, if T wave amplitude is more than 10 mm in precordial leads, or more than 5 mm in limb leads, we consider it as tall. Tall T is seen in many different situations, and have many differential diagnoses. Here, is the list of differential diagnoses. Remember that. QRS complex changes are very useful to determine the underlying cause. So, we can classify causes of tall T based on QRS complex into three main categories. First, tall T waves due to wide QRS complexes, including WPW, bundle branch block, hyperkalemia and so on. Second category, tall T waves due to tall QRS complex amplitude, including ventricular hypertrophy. The last category, Tall T wave with normal QRS complexes, including hyperkalemia, acute ischemia and normal variation. Therefore, in case of normal QRS complexes, three cardinal differential diagnoses must be considered. 1. Hyperkalemia, also known as dent T waves. 2. Early stages of acute ischemia, known as hyperacute T. 3. Normal variation. Medical history and other lab findings are useful to differentiate them. Several extra findings in electrocardiogram can help us differentiate these three to some extent. 1. Dull T in acute ischemia, and hyperkalemia is often symmetrical, while in normal variations, tall T wave is often asymmetric, with upstroke slower than downstroke. 2. Dull T in hyperkalemia is often peaked or tented, while neither normal variation nor acute ischemia cause peak T waves. 3. Dull T in hyperkalemia is narrow based, while in acute ischemia is broad based. Let's go through several examples. This strip belongs to a 50 year old male, known case of diabetes and hypertension, presented with typical chest pain. As it is clear, there are broad based and symmetrical hyperacute T waves in V3 and V4, with ST elevations in V2 and V3 and reciprocal ST depressions in inferior leads, so acute ischemia is the main diagnosis. Second strip is taken from a 43-year-old male presented with generalized weakness. Again, tall T waves are present in precordial leads. Here, the upstroke is slower than downstroke, therefore T waves are asymmetrical. On the other hand, they aren't peaked, and no particular ST elevation or reciprocal changes are present. So normal variation is more probable in this case. Never forget that, EKG findings aren't 100% sensitive and specific. Therefore, we are supposed to consider both acute ischemia and hyperkalemia as the possible cause of weakness in this patient. Next strip belongs to an 80-year-old patient presented with typical chest pain. As it is clear, there are symmetrical tall T waves in V2 and V3, with ST depressions in D3 that suggests acute ischemia. The last one in this part, is this EKG that belongs to a 63-year-old male, known case of diabetes presenting with generalized weakness. Here, are symmetrical, narrow-based and tent D waves and precordial leads. Therefore, hyperkalemia is highly probable. In this patient serum potassium was 7.6. In summary, narrow-based, symmetrical and pointed T waves are in favor of hyperkalemia while broad-based and symmetrical T with concomitant ST elevations or reciprocal ST depressions is in favor of acute ischemia. Remember that, asymmetrical tall T is in favor of normal variation. Another important and usually debating T-wave abnormality is, T-wave inversion. 
several well-known normal variations are present for T inversion. First, remember that, isolated D inversion in D3 and AVL, as well as in AVR and B1 can be normal. Second, right precordial T wave inversion. Shallow T inversion in B1 to B3 is relatively rare in general population, and is not associated with increased mortality, therefore is considered to be normal. Third one is, persistent juvenile pattern. It is another cause of right precordial T inversion in adults, and usually observed in females. Due to the dominance of right ventricular forces, shallow T inversion in V1 to V3 is absolutely a normal finding in childhood, and is so-called juvenile D wave pattern. If this inverted D wave pattern sustains to adulthood, we call it persistent juvenile D wave pattern. Persistent juvenile T wave is defined as, D inversion in two contiguous right precordial leads, and often disappears by the age of 40. Let's go through several examples. Here, is an EKG from a 22-year-old male with atypical chest discomfort. As you see, there is an isolated shallow T inversion in D3, and is considered normal. Next EKG belongs to a 40-year-old male with history of hyperlipidemia, presented with dyspnea at rest. There are upright D waves in all leads, except V1, AVL and AVR, and therefore is normal. Again, remember that, isolated D inversion in D3 and AVL is a normal finding. Our next electrocardiogram, is taken from a 33-year-old female with localized chest pain. Here are, shallow D inversions in V1 to V3. So as mentioned, this pattern is called persistent juvenile T wave inversion. Our last EKG is recorded from a 71-year-old male, with prior history of psoriasis, presented with weakness and diaphoresis. There are shallow D inversions in V1 to V3 due to normal variation. Remember that, persistent juvenile patterns often disappears after 40, therefore these precordial T inversions aren't due to juvenile pattern. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked this video, subscribe me and ring the bell. Have fun.